We have talked about injuries, triple crowns, guys falling asleep. You know the huge. Welcome back to Fantasy Baseball Today, brought to you by Captain Morgan. Love the week Huddy, of CBS. <laughs> Eric Mack falling asleep on Fantasy Baseball Today. It's I never a hot did that. Topic. Yes, you guys are going to get me fired. You did. You did. did. Arrest is just started. Yeah. We are starting talking about Jeff Francis coming out of nowhere. Had a good yeah. start. Hasn't started. Missed basically a whole year. Yes. Uh, but, Emac, you hate guys with shoulder injuries. I do. It's a... a problematic injury to come back from. The thing is with Jeff Francis, though, he was never a power guy. He mostly sat around 90 miles an hour. And the thing that you're affected most with your shoulder is your velocity. And he's a guy that's a control and command left-hander that's going to change speeds and really work uh, in the high 80s anyway, uh, kind of like a Barry Zito. And Jeff Francis can be a guy who's going to win a lot of games because those Rockies, I know it snowed last week in Denver, but it gets warm in the summer months and that's a hitter's park. I think Francis could win games with the Rockies getting him run support. I like this guy as a sleeper. I think we need to clear something up for all of you viewers out there that are looking on CBSSports.com and thinking, Javier Vasquez, is he going to the bullpen? What's the yeah, status on him? Good. I think a lot of people are confused yeah. about this Our guy. Our Javi watch. Can you clear <laughs> it up? Exactly. Yeah, well, go ahead. I mean, I'm, right. The, the Yankees had a double header last week mm -hmm. that affected a lot of their bullpen, so they need an extra arm. And then they had their, their uh, sixth starter start because of those uh, uh, six games in five days. Uh, Sergio Mitre started on Sunday, and he was their long man. So they, they need a long man in these next few days because – Mitre had just started. He can't be. He's not available out of the bullpen. And Vasquez is not going to start till the weekend. So okay, Vasquez might get a, a relief appearance Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. But he's still going to start Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. He'll be fine. And he's coming off his best start. You don't send Vasquez to the bullpen or skip his starts. Have him pitch his best outing and then just relegate him to the bullpen. Vasquez is a starter this week. He's starting against those Mets. They're struggling. Back in the National League, that's where Vasquez is comfortable. Um, this is a good a good start week for Javi Vasquez, even though the reports are he might be in the bullpen. And, and I got to give it to, to Skip, uh, you know, Joe Girardi for what he was able to do. Because remember, in fact, we mentioned here on the show uh, a week or so ago when they were playing Boston, he skipped him against Boston. He said, you know what, he's struggling a little bit. I'm gonna skip him and purposely pitch him against Detroit, a team that he matches up better with. And sure enough, he had a great start. So now he's got him rolling a little bit. I, I kind of ride that Javi train. Don't get off that train. This guy's yeah. very talented, and he can he can win a couple three games in a row for you, especially with that. Yankee lineup. All right, and you will face the Mets. And speaking of, uh, Oliver Perez definitely going to the bullpen. John yep. Denise re-injuring that hamstring. So some yep. holes in this rotation. Right, right. Right now you think, okay, maybe Perez uh, can't be used in the bullpen because we got Nice heading to the DL. He had missed uh, most of last season with a torn hamstring that required surgery. Nice is going uh, going to be shutting it down for at least two weeks, maybe a month. Uh, Perez is not the option, though, for the Mets coming back in the rotation. They're going to go to the long reliever, the 35-year-old rookie out of Japan, Hisanori Takahashi, as their number four starter. They need a fist starter for Perez. It's not going to be Perez. They're going to stop gap it with maybe a Toby Stoner or the guy who has no ulnar collateral ligament, the knuckleballer R.A. Dickey. Uh, don't worry about Stoner or Dickey. They're going to be garbage. Um, but Hisanori Takahashi, there is some potential there. Yeah, I definitely think so. And I mean, uh, you're talking about a guy that I know uh, pretty well. I, I, I kind of missed him by the time I retired, but he's 35. And like you mentioned, reminds me a lot, if you think about, of, a, of an ok uh, Okajima, you know, Hideki Okajima for the Boston Red Sox. The guy that can go short relief, long relief, spot start if you really need it, even with Okajima, uh, though they haven't needed it with all the stars they have in Boston, but they do need it with the Mets. So I, I, I'm going to tell you right now, I would start this guy because he's going to be, again, one of these mystical lefties with the herky-jerky Japanese-type motion yeah. that's going to trick the league for a couple of starts, potentially, and do all right and give you some quality starts. He has been very good in long relief, and it's, it's unfortunate for the Mets because he's been so important in long relief. When they get the three-inning outing out of Paris, he's the bridging the gap to, to get the big game back close and then actually get him some victories. But I wouldn't start him this week because he is facing the Yankees. His first major league be start surprised. against the Yankees is going to be tough. It, it, You'd be surprised because again, it always benefits a pitcher that, that you know the hitters don't know, and uh, those little Japanese pitchers, especially the lefties, are very crafty. Well, you're definitely going to start some of these guys. Your two start pitchers, a couple must start. You see Hiroki Kuroda on there, and yep. you had a conversation before this video about Dice K guys. Mm. Go yeah. at it. Well, well, Dice K last week uh, had his best start of the year. Um, I said start him, even though he had those two bad starts coming off the DL, and then he had that great outing. This, though, Dice K Matsuzaka, you can't touch him. Look at that, the Yankees and the Phillies. I tough, know Dice K tough. Matsuzaka was so impressive last time out, and you want to get him back in your lineup. But don't do it this week. It's bad news because look at the Yankees and the Phillies, two of the best offenses in baseball. 
hitters who are professional, they work deep in the counts, and Daisuke always pitches deep in the counts. Um, you know, Bad I think 130 pitches in the fourth inning, he's out of there. Yeah, no, that one I don't start because of, because of their familiarity. See, with the, with the Takahashi, there's no familiarity. So yeah. with this one, both these teams know this guy very well. It could be very dangerous. I don't start him against those two nasty teams. I have a teams. fantasy owner's yeah. probably a little bit tempted. Time for buy, sell. Tom Gorzolani up first. Perhaps a switch to Zambrano? No, yeah. yes? Well, one bad outing. I'm not going to give up on Gorzolani. He's actually a pretty solid pitcher as a number five starter. Uh, that, that was a bad outing. But I'm still I'm still gonna say bye if uh, you need a starter in deeper leagues. He's more of a matchup guy for me, but um, you know that strikeout uh, rate is pretty good with Gorzolani. I would I would keep him uh, and don't sell low on him. I'm after asking one Rich Harden, but I know how you feel about him. He's just so darn erratic. Yeah, he is erratic. He had some of the, uh, his best starts of the season going into last week, and then he he just thrown up an absolute stinker. This week though, I'm still. Going to start Rich Harden. I'm going to take that risk. He's facing the Orioles, and that's a good matchup for him. I think Rich Harden, he struggled with his command. He had a high walk total. The Orioles are a little more of an aggressive team that won't necessarily take him deep into counts. So I think Rich Harden is still a decent start. With all that said, there was, every team in baseball is playing seven games, so there's so many two-star pitcher options available to you. If you got a two-star pitcher who's marginal, maybe like a Chris Folstad we saw in one of those that's uh, a previous good one. lists, yeah. maybe sit Harden for him. But otherwise, with that matchup in Baltimore, I think Harden can be productive. This week. I, I, I'm not to go to belabor Harden right now, but I'm, I'm just I'm dumbfounded as to what's wrong with Rich Harden. Yeah. You, you see the walk to strikeout ratio there: 37 strikeouts to 31 walks. This guy was a strikeout strike throwing machine yeah. just a couple of three years ago, and, and then something happened. So I, I worry that there's something not right. 100% yet with his, with his shoulder, with his elbow, something, because he is way off. I don't start him right now. I just don't even take a chance. Do you start Nate Robertson? Here's a guy who had a couple nice starts early on, and you yeah. got excited, but yeah. not so much. This is pretty much what you can expect. You know, a, a 500 record of ERA in the mid-fours, a, a strikeout to walk rate that won't impress you. So Nate Robertson, I know he had some uh, surprising early starts for the Marlins, but he's more of a matchup guy, and this is uh, not a week to play. Uh, a marginal starter with all those two start options. So Nate Robertson, uh, just play the matchups with him in mixed leagues. He's more of an NL only starter. What about Chad Qualls? A, a one too many blown saves for you, or well, what? The, well, that would be ordinarily if a guy like that does that, you go right to a setup man. That's what major league teams do. That's what fantasy owners do. Do it in advance. But look at the setup man too. His. Uh, uh, Qualls' ERA is 7.62. The setup man's ERA, Juan Gutierrez, his ERA is over nine right now. So there's really no backup plan with the Arizona, D uh, Arizona Diamondbacks. It's just they're all junk. They're going to stick with Qualls. I think Qualls can be an effect, more effective uh, reliever. And then those deeper leagues, you're not going to use them in mixed leagues with them struggling right now. And those deeper and only leagues, anybody who's breathing and getting saves has value. So he still has value. It's just I wouldn't use him in mixed league. Well, let's talk about Philly's closer situation because Lidge is injured. You would think Contreras would be right up there. He didn't take the save. He didn't, but he will. Yeah, well, he 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 pitched his he got his first save on Saturday, and then he he st uh, pitched in two consecutive games. They didn't want the converted starter. He was only a, a reliever last year as a long reliever. Um, he's not usually a guy you can trust on three straight days yet. But he is a pretty decent option as their fill-in closer for Lidge. I know they used J.C. Romero on Sunday night. That was more of a function. They just want to get all their bull pieces, bullpen pieces going. Romero is a matchup guy as a left-hander. Uh, Contreras is the closer, though. He's going to get the saves, and his numbers right now are pretty good. I think you could trust Contreras as a closer in all leagues right now. Hey, how blessed have the Phillies have been over the last few years with, with relievers, late-inning relievers, if you think yeah, about it? Yeah, and, and their bullpen has struggled, but they've always... They've made, always sent somebody. Yeah. I mean, even J.C. Romero comes in now, and, and he's the guy to keep in mind. But I yeah. do definitely agree. The, the, the deal with Contreras is that this guy has two dramatic pitches with this fastball that moves so much in a fork ball that if it was short times like that, that's what you're seeing, the 18 strikeouts, only two walks. Yeah. Uh, and I think he is going to close, but he's not going to close like your regular guy, like you're saying. He's yeah. not going to go three or four days can't, in a row. Right. Can't do but the three Contreras. games. So Romero and deeper leagues, if you're looking for, any, like I said, NL, NL only, a little sleep. anybody who's, who's a breathing sleeper. and closing, uh, Romero might get some situational saves. All right, but Contreras is going to close, so hold tight, fantasy owners. And for more on closures, Al Melchior, our stats guru, is all over it. Al? Hey, everybody. This week, we're going to focus on closers for the first time this season. And in particular, we're going to look at fly ball rates, and we're going to look at home run totals. And what we've done here is we've assembled a collection of uh, the most fly ball prone closers, or 
pitchers who are currently getting some, some uh, save opportunities and take a look at whether or not they're going to be more prone maybe than other closers to give up costly home runs. And this comes to my attention because Leo Nunez has been so successful so far this year. He's picked up a couple of saves this past weekend. He's been very effective all season long. And back in March, I said in one of our podcasts, I thought he was going to be one of the worst closers in all of baseball. So what happened with Leo Nunez? Well, let's take a look at the graph here. And what we have for each of these fly ball pitchers is a couple of bars. Now, the first bar represents how many fly balls that they've given up in each of the last three years. But the dark bars represent which ones actually stayed and played, not the ones that, that left the park. The light blue bar to the right represents which ones went long for home runs. And what we see here, just with a quick, with a quick glance, as you'll notice that most of these fly ball pitchers haven't given up a whole lot of home runs. They've had very normal home run totals. And in fact, if we can isolate that home run bar for a moment here, you'll see that in each of the last three seasons, most of them had numbers around five, six, seven home runs over the whole season, very normal numbers. Um, but there have also been a few of these pitchers each year who have given up lots of home runs, eight, nine, 10, 12, or more. Um, last year, Kevin Gregg, gave up a lot of home runs, Matt Capps did, and of course our friend Leo Nunez, and all had pretty poor seasons. So the question is then, can we uh, expect a pitcher who gives up a lot of fly balls and also gives up a lot of home runs, is that going to continue from season to season? And I think what you can see very clearly here is that's not the case. Last year it was Greg's turn and Capps' turn and Nunez's turn. The year before you had a whole different group of pitchers that were giving up a lot of, fly, uh, giving up a lot of homers rather, and in 2007, a different set altogether there. So there's no consistency, and the reason why is because relievers pitch a small number of innings, home runs are rare events for them, so small sample sizes really uh, muddy up the trends. And so there's not a lot there that we can rely on from season to season. So what does this mean for us then here in 2010? Well, what it means is that the pitchers from last year, like Greg and Caps and Nunez, who gave up a lot of home runs, they're doing well this year, and we can trust that they will continue to do well because last year's performance was just a fluctuation that will, will likely be wiped out this year. Um, it also means that pitchers like Brian Fuentes and Joaquin Soria, who have given up a lot of home runs so far this year, can turn that trend around at any time again because it's just a matter of it being a small sample. So you can trust these pitchers this year, and again, if the closers got good stats, good strikeout rate, good walk rate, you can trust him. Trevor Hoffman's given up a lot of home runs, but he hasn't also put up good stats in other categories. So for him, forget about the home runs. We just can't trust him for a whole variety of other reasons. That was Al Melchior, our stats guru, and Eric Mack, our fantasy baseball columnist, has all sorts of opinions about what yeah, he just said. Jumping all over this like a 3 0 fastball. Al, the professor, is an angel, and I'm kind of the devil. And I have, no. to, play, oh I have to play the devil's advocate here because I think a problem with closers, it, it Destroy, it falls apart on them when they got in the sticky situations and they have to throw the ball over the plate. So the closers with a little more of the command issues, like we've seen Trevor Hoffman fall apart, it's little his command isn't as good. So now i got to throw a strike right down the middle because I'm not able to paint it black on the corner. So that's when the homers happen, when they're throwing it right over the middle of the plate. So I think what Al should do is look at the command, the, the pitches thrown per batter, um, the walk rate, those things, I think those lead to homers more than a fly ball. There are fly ball pitchers that don't give up homers. That does happen. But uh, those command pitchers, those closers that struggle with the command, those are the guys that end up giving the long balls. They have to throw the ball a little bit too perfectly. What about Trevor Hoffman's yeah. former teammate, Arrestes Destrade? Yeah. Well, and I hear both points here very well. I think I agree with Doc, you know, in the sense that, yes, I think when you, when you get those fly ball uh, scenarios, you're obviously going to get a you know, propensity to give up more home runs. But I think it is kind of cyclical with relievers because they come in at different type of points and times and, and you can have that. But I agree on the other side. Yeah, you know, if you're in a pinch and you're and you're throwing, you know, your 3-0 every time and every hitter you face as a reliever, you got to come in and groove one. But you also might come in with the bases loaded where you have to come in and groove one. Okay. If not, you're walking. So here's, you know, the hitter takes advantage. These are major league hitters. As far as my boy Trevor, when I played with him, we're talking a million years ago, and he was throwing <laughs> 97 miles an hour. He's throwing 87 miles an hour. His changeup hasn't gotten any slower, but his fastball has gotten slower. Hence, the differential in speed, a hitter can react better. That's what I think is happening with Trevor. He's just not being able to throw as, as hard and change speeds as well. 
But bet between the ages of 43 and 44 or whatever he is, uh, I don't think the, the, the velocity really makes a difference. But I do notice an uptick in walk rate. So his walks, he's a little less command, in command of things right now well, and needs to be a little reason, more I, wild we, in the strike zone. We could talk about this for a long time, but the reason that he's wild... No, we wild, don't have time. I know, we don't. <laughs> the, time, the, time that they, they, the reason that he's walking a little more is that he's trying to be more finesse pitcher. It's not that he's lost it. It's just that he knows he can't rear back and blow it by somebody. So he's got to hit the corners. You miss a little bit. You get in trouble. You got to come back over the plate. You get banged. There is much more. You, you, the, I'm, I'm good. It. I want to just one more. I don't mean to be belabor the point, <laughs> but you, you were talking about the fly ball. Not all fly balls are created equal because the guy who throws a good changeup can pop up people. That's, that's a fly ball. Jared that, that's an effective way to retire a batter. So that not all fly balls are created equal. Those pitchers that can keep you off. The square part of the bat, I know the bat is cylindrical. You were going to tell me that, weren't you? I was. If Actually, you can keep it off tongue. the square of the bat, you can still get out with fly. Doc's got us talking about topic. That's what he's trying <laughs> to create. But you know what is created equal? All of our viewers. So ask us your questions. We're going to answer them right here on Fantasy Baseball today. And stick around. Come right back and see us.